elevator and get an apartment. Like, but that first trip, he was like, you know, Sean Brock, McCrady's, Charleston Royalty. He has a new restaurant called Husk. Y'all have to eat there while you're here. I was like, yeah, I have no clue who that is. Yeah. And they were, he was like, you should go. And I ate there with my mom. And we were both like, holy shit, this guy makes the best version of my mom's food. Yeah. Like, this is vegetables. There's like a center of the plate protein, but like, this is vegetables from somebody's yard. Yeah. That somebody deeply cares about. And I was like, this place is awesome. So I go home for two months. I'm planning out like how I'm going to like, how long I'm going to stay. Cause I ended up staying in Oxford an extra like half a semester because like football was going on. And I was like, well, I'm going to stay for games. I drove like an 18 wheeler and a box truck. Like, yeah. I just got like a jobs to yeah. So my dad didn't want to kill me for staying in a house he owned. Heard. Um, but when I went back with my dad to find an apartment, we ate at Husk again. And I was like, this is it. This is like, this is what I want to be. Um, and I had this like thing in my brain. I was like, this is the job for people who work their way up somewhere. And then they take a pay cut to come be this guy's dude. Exactly. And I didn't know how it worked. I had never been exposed to like that real kitchen before. Yeah. And the first week I was at culinary school, they took volunteers for Charleston food, uh, wine and food. They call it wine and food there because Amex has a copyright on food and wine. Now. No fucking way. Yeah. What the fuck? Um, but you could volunteer to help a chef. So I volunteered to help a guy from Oku, which is like Oak Steakhouse Group sushi restaurant. And I helped him do all his prep, his mise or whatever. I did it terribly seemingly and then he was like hey dude go do whatever you want to like you've helped enough now enjoy the event and come back at the end and help us clean heard i'm fresh out of old miss and i was like i'm going right over there i'm getting a drink there's a dude over there that has like a grits and pork belly thing i'm going to get that and then i'm going to go out back and have two drinks and i'll go back and help those dudes clean yeah i get behind the tent and Travis Grimes, who was the guy who ran Husk, and Sean were out there. And I knew who he was then. Like, I had done the research. Yeah. Him. And I was like, hey, dude. Like, they're burning cigs. And we were all drinking. And I was like, hey, man, I don't want to bother you. Like, I know you're a busy dude. I was like, can I interview you for culinary school? Yeah. And he's like, I don't do that. And I was like, no, it's cool, man. Like, I, I have a college degree. Like... I like have an English focus. Like I, it'll be really well written. He was like, I don't give a shit how well written it is. Dude. Yeah. Nobody's going to read it. Exactly. And like, I don't have time for that. Yeah. And he was like, but like, you're the only person who's ever like from that school. That's ever like walked straight up to me and ask that. Yeah. He was like, so here's my phone number and here's my assistant's phone number was who it really was. Kristen, who still works for him now in Nashville. Yeah. And he was like, call this person. If I'm in town, just based on the balls on you, I'll do it. And I was like, okay, sick. So I blew up Kristen's phone like 15 times a day for two weeks. (laughs) And finally, like, I get a call back and it's just like, (sighs) Kristen Cunningham calling on behalf of Sean Brock. He will meet you tomorrow at Husk at 2 o'clock. Come prepared. You have 35 minutes with him. Never call my phone again. And I was like, sick. Thanks later. Hang up. I get there and meet him. And I'm talking. I've like, I'm dialed in. Like there's been a couple articles written about like he did a play on the arpege egg. And he had done a play on like the golden egg from either Mugaritz or Elbuye. I can't remember. Yeah. But like. And he had done this carrot dish that he got interviewed about where it was like, you know, when everybody was doing like, when like Barber was taking the almond shells and like throwing them all in the dirt and composting them and like growing yeah. a carrot. Like, I just grew an almond flavored carrot. Yeah. And just put almonds on the outside of the thing, bro. Chill out. Yeah. But like, <laughs> I told Sean, I was like, hey man, first question I want to talk to you about is that carrot. Like what's like, what are all the steps that take to get the like carrot cooked in the carrot juice, rolled in the carrot ash, grilled over carrot, like greens, like 
run me down like what that tastes like. And he was like, oh, you actually care about this. He was like, I just thought you were a shitty culinary school kid. Do you want to drink? And I was like, no, I don't really want to drink. Like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm trying yeah. to like get to the bottom of some stuff. Here. Yeah. And he was like, no, 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 no. We're going to do the interview. He was like, we have more than 35 minutes. I just said that because I didn't want to do this. And yeah. Kristen was sick of you. And he was like, but we're going to hang out now. <laughs> by, the, by the end of the interview, he was like, hey, we've been open for four months. Half the staff has quit. Like, people came from New York and, yeah. like, didn't know how hard it was going to be. What it was going to be. Mm-hmm. Like, I worked in, like, the best restaurant in Boston or whatever. And he was like, did the corn come shucked? Because it doesn't here, and we're going to get four cases of it. And, like, he was like, can you stage next week? I need, I want to hire you. And I was like, what's a stash? Yeah. And he was like, <laughs> he was like, Jesus fuck. He was like, I don't know if I want to hire you anymore. And I was like, I was like, yeah, dude, I'll do whatever you want to. He's like, here's the deal. Come here for a week yeah. and work for free. And then go to McCready's for a week and work. And I was like, and he was like, at the end of that, like I'm hiring it both. I'll find a job for you. You're a cool guy. Yeah. And at the end of the week at Husk, like Travis was like, Hey dude, you're kind of cool. Like you're terrible, but like, you're like, I want to hire you. Yeah. Like, people around here like you because like, you're a big goofy dude and you work hard. Even if it's like, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> and I was like, sick. <laughs> I was like, I can start in like, I can't start next week. Cause I already promised chef. I would do a week at McCready's. And yeah. he was like, that's cool. He was like, you should do that. Don't tell me yes yet. Go to McCready's first. I was like, no, I'm telling you yes. Because like, this is like, I'm, re- I relate to this food. I have a knowledge of it, I think, at yeah. least. Like, I can't prep it yet because I'm too slow, but like, I have an idea of what it should be. And I was like, and I have no idea how to do what they're doing. Yeah. Because it was like, that was like, Sean was pushing, like, still modern. It was still a tasting menu and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I got there and I staged the first day, and some of those dudes just like rained shit on me. Yeah. Like, it was brutal. Yeah. And I was like, God, I. I hate this. Yeah. I was like, y'all are talking to me in a way that like, you wouldn't talk to me if we were outside. Exactly. Yeah. And I was like, it's cool. It. Like, it's cool. Y'all are doing it because I don't know anything. Yeah. But in all that, like a lot of people say that like Jeremiah is like a real, like beat you over the head dude. Mm-hmm. And he may be, but like Jeremiah was genuinely nice to me there. And another dude, Kid Russ was. And Jeremiah offered me a job there too because there was two other people staging for a job when I was there. Yeah. And both of them just hit him with like a list of like, I work in Pittsburgh at the da-da-da-da hotel. I've prepared food. And he was like, oh, that's sick. I don't care. And just walked away. And he was like, hey, man, you having a good time with that salsa for you? I was like, not really, but I'm on Scrub It, Chef. And he was like, you're sick. He was like, now go upstairs and make 40 like deli kits of like there was like a the Charleston ice cream dish the yeah. rice dish had like 48 garnishes he was like so go upstairs get all of them cleaned do 48 like we have 48 tasting menus tonight deli up all the meats for the garnish bring it back down and it took me forever like I got used, I got troll hands yeah exactly and I was like <laughs> I'm up there like I had to borrow a pair of tweezers to like pick the stuff and like I came back down and I was like, he was like, you're, you're going to work here, right? Like Sean says you want a job. And I was like, I'm not going to work here. I already took a job at Husk. And he was like, why are you here then? You're like wasting my time. And I was like, fuck, I didn't mean to do that. Like we're cool. We're cool now. He's awesome. Dude. Yeah. But like, I think he was like, God, I need somebody so bad. Why would Sean send this guy over here? who can't even like, can't, can't work first off. And yeah. Like, but then I liked him and he's already taken a job down the street. <laughs> um, but that was it. I started, I moved to Charleston on like February 11th or something. And I started working at Husk like February 20th. Heard. And on the 21st, I should have dropped out of culinary school, but I didn't. I finished. Okay. So I That's did, rough. I did the stats. That's, yeah. I did four days of school, four days of work. And then on the back end, I did. Like, by the end of it, I was doing, like, Travis was like, I need you here five days. So, like, the last semester of school, I did four days of school, five days of work. And it was, I lived 30 minutes away because it was so expensive. I had to live, like, out by the plantations. Yeah, exactly. 
it was cool though. I loved Charleston. At the point in my life I was there, I could not afford to stay by the time I left. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So how long did you end up at Husk for? A little over two and a half years. Okay. Uh, and during that time, you get hired on. What's your first position? Prep. Okay. A.M. prep. A.M. prep. 6 a.m. to fucking 8, 8 p.m. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Um, like 8 a.m. till like 8 to 8 maybe. Yeah. Uh, for me Not because I was shift. because I was bad. Yeah. Like I couldn't get it all done. There was a dude there named Julio who could just bus prep down like I'd never seen. And he was the other prep guy. Yeah. And it was like demoralizing yeah, to work he, with him. He Julio. just schooled you all day. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and like the whole time would be hung over. Yeah. And like doing toots in the bathroom and stuff. I'm like, where's the dude at? Like, how did you, he just deleted like two yeah. cases of sunchokes? <laughs> and I'm over here like trying to peel a sunchoke. And I'm like, that guy's like still wasted. And he just did all of them. Like, how'd this happen? <laughs> and, but I learned a lot doing that. I did. So I was the AM prep guy. Yeah. Uh, Wes, Wesley Grubbs, who now works in Columbus for a guy who was at Rose's Luxury, BJ. Um, they work together. They opened a restaurant in Columbus now. They were all there with me. And then Justin Cherry, who has like a Washington grant, was okay. like, he had been the original butcher when we opened and became like the AM sous chef. Okay. And they saved my ass a few times. Like, I should have gotten fired a few times in that first two months. Yeah. Like, one time they get, like, Tra- I think Travis was in a bad mood, and he was like, I'm getting somebody today. And he was like, well, that that one's been here the least time. Let's get him. Yeah. And he gave me, like, a case of underripe sun golds, and it was like, blanch and peel all of them. And they weren't ripe. Yeah. And I blanched them, and I went to peeling them, and I couldn't peel. Like, they wouldn't peel. Yeah. And he's like, you got to be done by, like, blank time. And she, hey, Travis, you don't know this story yet, but like with five minutes left, Cherry came in there. He was like, hey, go smoke a cig. And I was like, I don't even want to smoke. Like, what are you talking about? He's like, go outside for two minutes. And I went outside for two minutes. He came back and I was like, where's the tomatoes? He was like, never ask about the tomatoes again. He was like, but you finished them. And like when I took the trash out that night, the tomatoes were in the trash. But like Cherry saved me that day. Yeah. And then six months later, I was golden. Like. I'm trying to think. That was so, like, it was still early. I moved to pastry real quick. Heard. I liked pastry. I thought I wanted to be, like, a pastry chef for a while. Who were the other cooks in the kitchen at the time? Oh, so many dudes. Uh, Any of them that I've had on the show (laughs) recently? No, because most of them worked down the street. Like... God, they were all at McCready's when you were So Baxter was at McCready's. Baxter started at McCready's, like, the same time... Or like a little after I started at Husk. Okay. Um, Baxter's roommate in Nashville when they first opened Husk was my buddy Morgan, who's like a giant Maori dude who lives in Australia now, but was from New Zealand. He came to Stage. He had like a history of like, he's the most insane dude. Like he grew up in New Zealand, went to Australia, worked for Tetsuya, um, didn't get like a chef job he thought he wanted, so he moved to Brazil. Yeah, became a modeling agent. Heard was on Australia's Next Top Model, made some lady cry, and what it's like a, like a, it's like a viral YouTube yeah. clip because he said, and it's insane because he's like he says like, "Sorry, love, the lights are on, but nobody's home." Yeah, and he's like he's had like he's taken a lot better care of himself now but at the time he was like 400 pounds covered yeah. in like his like family's tattoos yeah and just looks and had dreads and just looked insane yeah and she started crying and he said the first time he did it they were like it's solid gold mate do it again and the woman he said the woman had to stand there for like 12 takes of him just like crushing her crushing her. wow and he was like well i think i might want to go back to cooking yeah yeah and so he went from there he went to garnier uh-huh and did like he would do like four months visa hop come back do it again did that for a year and heard about sean and wanted to come to charleston not to work at mccready's but to work at husk and like that was one of the coolest things about husk was like this dude cycled in and then like uh Fabs 
like from Contra and Wild.